Hey guys, welcome back. So this is part two of the setup for our PCS3. We're gonna go over graphic settings specifically in this video for low-end computers, higher-end computers, and game-specific settings. And then we're gonna finally go over troubleshooting using the Wikipedia page at the end of this video. Timestamps will be below, so if there's anything specific you wanna to jump to, feel free to do that. If you find this video helps you guys, a like would be appreciated. If you're still having issues, you can drop a comment. I can try my best to help you guys. Thank you, and with all that out of the way, let's get into it. Okay, so before we even get into it, I want to be very clear that PlayStation 3 emulation is extremely game dependent. I'm going to be using Kingdom Hearts 2.5 uh, Remix for this video because I found that it is perfect to show you low end, high end, and game specific troubleshooting. Um, so we're going to go through all of those using this specific game. Um, if you're having issues, definitely feel free to drop a comment. but. Uh, it will be really hard for me to help you guys in some circumstances, but maybe I can find some resources for you, okay? First thing we're going to do is go to the global configuration settings. These are settings that I find work best for every game. I'm going to reset to default settings for all my tabs here. And the three we're going to the three tabs we're going to focus on are going to be CPU, GPU, and then emulator. Okay, so before we get into the settings, guys, we're going to go to the emulator tab and enable performance overlay. This will give you the chart on your screen that will show you your frames per second. You can put a graph if you want as well. I have the graph turned on for the video just to get a better visualization. But what this is going to do is going to help you know uh, if a setting you change actually reduces performance or makes it better. After you got your settings set up, you can come back here and turn it off. So for the CPU tab, I find that there's only one setting that I would like to change, and it says enable SPU loop detection. It, this, for whatever reason, seems to make everything just run a lot smoother for me. The description below says that it will reduce CPU usage, so this is probably best in most cases and why I want to put it on the global settings. It does say that in some cases it'll cause audio stuttering, though. So if your audio starts to stutter after turning this on, go back and turn it off. Uh, for the recompiler, this has been working great for me, this LLVM, but I notice on like Skate 3, for example, that this ASM JIT worked a bit better. Leave it default LLVM. If you're having issues with a game, try changing this and then click apply and running your game again. Just remember also that anytime you change a setting in here, you will need to restart your game for it to take effect. So if you have the game running in the background, just make sure to close it, come back, change the settings, save it, and then reopen the game. So for the GPU tab, this is where we're gonna get more specific with lower comp lower end computers and higher end computers. For lower end computers, let's start with the filters. Anistropic filtering, you can turn off to the, or turn to the lowest rather two times. Anti-aliasing, we're gonna disable that. If you find that the game is running okay, you can come back to anti-aliasing later and turn it on auto. For resolution, we're gonna leave this as default 720p and the resolution scale will be the biggest factor here. I would like to suggest that you leave it on default, but if you're finding that it's running slowly, you can maybe drop it down to 75 or even 50%. This will be your biggest performance killer. I don't wanna to recommend too low unless it's really not working at 100%, but this will be the first thing you come back to and change. V-Sync you can turn on. I find V-Sync looks better. It'll reduce screen tearing. Uh, so when you're moving, you'll see some weird lines that form on the screen. If it's off, so you can turn it on and stretch to display area, turn that on. Click apply. So you can see on screen with, the, with uh, some of the gameplay here that the textures are pretty fuzzy. There's a lot of jagged edges on everything, but it's running okay. We're gonna show you how to get 60 FPS using game patches. I have it off for the low end PC because it's not necessary. We're just striving to get the basic performance out of the PS3 here. Even if it does look jagged, even if it does look blurry, um, this is kind of how the PS3 performed. So this is our baseline and this is actually what we're shooting for. So for high-end settings, we're going to go into the GPU tab and leave the CPU settings the way we had it. We'll set the anisotropic filter to either 8 or 16 times. 8's probably good enough. Set the anti-aliasing to auto. 
Leave the default resolution at 720 so that we have maximum compatibility with our games, but you can turn the resolution scale up to 150%, which is 1080p, 200%, which is 1440p, or if your computer is really strong and you have a 4K monitor, you can go to 300% and get 4K resolution. My monitor is only 1080p, so I'm going to leave it at 1920 by 1080 you can enable FSR upscaling to make the textures look a bit better and increase the strength. If you're finding your games aren't running that well, this should be the first thing you can disable, turning it off and resetting to 50%. Turn on VSync, stretch to display area, turn on multi-thread RSX if you have a strong processor, i7 or i9 equivalent, and if you have a good GPU, turn on asynchronous texture streaming. Click apply and then save. Next, we're going to check for game modifications by looking for game patches. Game patches sometimes have um, different things. They could have performance patches. They could have uh, cheats that you might like. They might have just basic mods, fun mods even. Um, Kingdom Hearts specifically has a 60 FPS mod. So to check game patches for your game, right click it and then manage game patches. If your game's not showing up in here but you, and you have to load it manually, you can click manage at the top and go to game patches. You can, you'll, yours will be blank. I've already done this part, but click download latest patches. It'll go through and check and say if it, say it's up to date. It's much easier if it's on here because it'll just filter it for you. Turn on. I already have it turned on, but by default, these will be off. Go ahead and turn on 60 FPS. The reason there's two games in here for me is because Kingdom Hearts is actually like three games in one. Um, it has patches for two out of the three games. Uh, click save. And now you'll see the difference. Like in the side by side, you'll see the 60 FPS running side by side with the 30 FPS makes a huge difference and works incredibly well. If you want the default, if you want the standard default PS3, you, you don't have to do that part. I just really like 60 FPS gameplay. I prefer that a hundred times over compared to 30 FPS. It's way more comfortable on my eyes. But the options there for you. Okay, so for game specific settings, if you right click the game in your library, you can actually go to change custom configuration. This will bring up the same menu as before. Uh, but it should have your default settings loaded, and this is where you can actually change it specifically for one game. So if I save custom configuration, then you'll see that it has this little icon next to the game title. And you can boot with custom configuration. It should be the default when you double click it anyways. So I mentioned this in my previous video, but if you're coming here fresh, each game has its own entry on their Wikipedia page. And this is where we're going to get a lot of these game specific settings. So if you right click the game, there's actually a shortcut to check game compatibility, but you can go to their website and go to the compatibility tab. Uh, link is actually in the description. So when we check the game compatibility through the, through the game itself, it'll actually show a link here. You can click the game name to go to the Wikipedia, or you can click the game ID to go to a forum where people are discussing some things. Wikipedia page is where we're going to go for now. So. This game has some recommendations. Advanced configuration uh, has this accurate LLVM as set to off. Needed if crashing at opening cinematic. Read color buffers. Fixes the flickering background in the pause menu. These are both for Kingdom Hearts 2 Final Mix. I didn't get these issues myself, but if, you, if you're having these issues, you can do it. The debug configuration is a hidden tab. Now this is game. Now this is why I think Kingdom Hearts was so perfect for me. I am having this issue where the FPS drops when Roxas attacks. So to fix it, it says you have to open up a hidden menu called debug configuration. So to open this menu, there is a, a click here. We're gonna walk through it. We have to open up our PS3 folder, go to the folder GUI configs and open up current settings.ini. If it asks you, if your computer asks you what to open it with, you can open it with Notepad. Uh, it tells me to change a specific tab. 
on here. So I'm going to control F to find this. Show debug tab right here. So I'm going to set this to true and then save and close. So now when I reopen the program, you'll see that there's a new tab called debug and it has some more settings for us. These are only to be changed if the Wikipedia says to change it and only change it for game specific settings. Uh, so going back, we're gonna look for four CPU blit emulation and turn it on. Oh, here. <laughs> okay. So it's here, uh, save custom configuration. So now this game and only this game will have that turned on. If I go to a different game, and go to create custom you'll see it's off so that's what we need because that could break this game it could break this game uh, but it, we need it for this one and you'll see that when i run it no longer dropping to 40 fps every time i use my jump attack so that's really really nice okay i hope that helped you guys if it did please consider dropping a like or subscribing to the channel i'm going to be going through some uh, some other emulator setups including the wii u including the nintendo switch dolphin and doing some cool mods with some of the games uh, i got some content planned gameplay content and i'm going to be uh, pretty regular with this so hopefully you guys can join for the ride all the best